For ages, we knew Neanderthals as our only closest relatives until something particular surfaced in the Denisovan cave. In 2008, a bone was discovered and taken to a lab to match it with Homo sapiens or Neanderthals. Shockingly, it turned out that it was from a complete different species, which scientists named Denisovans. What is even more surprising is that traces of their DNA still live on in people across the globe today. Could these enigmatic cousins of modern humans be the final remnants of archaic humanity? Join us today as we delve into who they were, why they're so special, and what factors make them stand out among our evolutionary predecessors. The recently discovered species in the grand timeline of human history are Denisovans. They are the first ancient hominin species to be revealed by genes alone, not by fossil classification. So who are they really? It's amazing that after all these years, we continue uncovering new chapters in our family tree. The latest in our timeline, Denisovans, are an extinct species of hominids and quite a close relative to us. These ancient beings likely roamed from Siberia to Southeast Asia during the last Ice Age, carving out their place in history. What's really intriguing is that DNA evidence suggests Denisovans aren't just a distant cousin to us and Neanderthals, they're practically family. They share a common ancestor with both species, known as Homo heidelbergensis, who probably lived in Africa at least 160,000 years ago. Here's where it gets really interesting. Around 300,000 to 400,000 years ago, some Homo heidelbergensis decided to move out of Africa. Some headed west into Europe and eventually evolved into Neanderthals, while others ventured east into Asia around 370,000 years ago and became what we now know as Denisovans. Meanwhile, our own ancestors, Homo sapiens, stayed in Africa and evolved into the humans we are today. Well, as far as we know, but our paths somehow crossed with the Denisovans when we migrated out of Africa, leading to a fascinating encounter between species some 40,000 to 60,000 years ago. You might be wondering, how do we even begin to understand a species that lived thousands of years ago? Thanks to the marvels of modern science, where mitochondrial DNA analysis serves as our time-traveling guide because mitochondrial DNA holds the maternal pattern of inheritance, researchers use this method to reveal the genetic makeup of the Denisovans. But what secret does their DNA hold? And how does it shed light on their existence? Well, there was a discovery that really grabbed the world's attention. In 2008, a pinky finger bone known as Denisovan III was unearthed from layer 11. This bone dates back to anywhere between 50,000 and 30,000 years. Scientists eagerly sent it off for DNA analysis, and the results were published in 2010, which were nothing short of astonishing. It turned out that this bone belonged to a young female from a previously unknown type of ancient human. While sharing some similarities with both Neanderthals and modern humans, she was distinct enough to be classified as a new species. But the bone also contained traces of Neanderthal DNA, suggesting that these two ancient human groups may have mated in the past. So how are they a distinct species? When scientists compared their genomes to those of modern humans and Neanderthals, they found that Denisovans were quite different from both. While they were slightly more similar to Neanderthals than to modern humans, especially those in Africa, the Denisovan genome was still distinct enough to represent a separate population. Their mitochondrial DNA, for example, was vastly different while modern humans share a mitochondrial ancestor from around 200,000 years ago and Neanderthals from around 500,000 to 700,000 years ago, the Denisovan mitochondrial DNA traces back to a common ancestor over a million years ago. This suggests that Denisovans may have interbred with an even more ancient human population, possibly something like Homo erectus or another unknown archaic human group. One intriguing aspect is that Denisovans shared some functional genes with Neanderthals, particularly genes related to immunity. For example, some modern Tibetan people have special genetic mutations that help them manage hemoglobin levels, allowing them to live better at high altitudes. 
These mutations, which are rare in other humans, are found in Denisovan DNA. Researchers think Denisovans developed these traits from their own high-altitude living, and our ancestors inherited them through interbreeding. Similarly, Inuit populations have gene variants that help develop heat-storing brown fat that is useful in cold climates. These genes are also similar to Denisovan genes, suggesting we got them from these ancient cousins too. And the benefits of their shared DNA keep going. Like other Denisovan genetic traits, could have improved our immune system and changed our skin color. These adaptions likely helped our ancestors survive diseases and new environments with shifting climates as they spread across Europe and Asia. However, until we find more Denisovan fossils, the full impact on their genes on our evolution will remain a bit of a mystery. So far, we have proof of the Denisovan's existence in two key locations, Denisova Cave in Siberia and Baishia Karst Cave on the Tibetan Plateau. Most anthropologists believe the Siberian cave marked their northernmost reach as it was simply too cold further north. However, genetic evidence suggests they lived much further south in East Asia or Southeast Asia, possibly reaching as far as the Philippines and extending beyond the Wallace Line, which was a natural boundary between Asia and Australia to New Guinea. To the east, several potential Denisovan fossils have been found in China. These include bones from Sujiayeo in northern China and two skulls from Chichang in central China. Additionally, a jawbone found off the coast of Taiwan that didn't match any known species has made it another Denisovan candidate. To the west, an arm bone from Selangur Cave in Kazakhstan might be Denisovan, but attempts to extract DNA from it have been unsuccessful. Up until now, what we got from Denisovan research is teeth and jawbones, which reveals that Denisovan molars are large and lack any specialized features found in Neanderthal teeth. Besides, they have many unusual cusps and don't resemble modern human molars at all, and their jaws were strong-built, but shorter than those of Neanderthals. However, the whole physical appearance can't be figured out based on such small evidence. And if it were not for DNA, we might never have known they were different from other human species. In fact, scientists can't officially describe them as a new species yet. They need more bones to compare with other species to identify what makes Denisovans unique. The lack of fossils also make it hard to understand what they were really like. Let's take a look at the split of Eurasia, which took place around 430,000 years ago. We don't know exactly why the species diverged, but one theory suggests that as the Arctic ice sheet expanded south to the Black Sea, it separated Europe from Asia, dividing the early humans into these eastern and western groups. However, these splits weren't permanent. Around 60,000 to 90,000 years ago, Homo sapiens experienced serious climatic shifts and drought in Africa, which forced them to move to the Middle East, where they met with the Denisovans, and both groups interbred. As a result, about 5% of the Denisovan genome survives today, not in Siberia, but in people living in Southeast Asia, especially in Papua New Guinea. However, we do not have any evidence of how Denisovans died out. It could be possible that the Homo sapiens outcompeted them. Another contributing factor was disease. When Denisovans left Africa for temperature regions with fewer diseases, they lost immunity to many illnesses. Later, when Homo sapiens moved north, we brought these diseases to populations that had never encountered them, resulting in a significant loss of life. Climate could have played a crucial role too, but again, until now, there is no evidence of an environmental catastrophe. When Denisovans moved from Siberia to Indonesia, they faced very different climatic and environmental challenges. So it is possible that they weren't well adapted to the changing climate and eventually died out. Still, there are more controversies. The lack of fossils have given rise to many other debates. In 2021, a Chinese skull, Dragon Man, was discovered, which some scientists believed could have been Denisovans, while others rendered it a new species. Other fossils from China and Southeast Asia spark debate, with some proposing that small-bodied humans, like Homo floresiensis, the hobbit, and Homo luzonensis may have been Denisovans. Since 2010, many discoveries have been made, and experts in the field are searching for more fossils to help us understand how Denisovans truly look like. 
and what their culture was like. With enough finds, we may even be able to give Denisovans an official species name. More genetic studies will also help us learn how interbreeding with other human species influenced our own evolution. And with the fact that the traces of Denisovan ancestry are found in modern humans, we could say they can possibly be the last surviving archaic humans. Denisovans offer a fascinating glimpse into our ancient past, revealing a distinct yet intertwined lineage with Neanderthals and modern humans. What aspect of their lives did you find the most interesting? Let us know in the comments below and check out our videos that dive into the controversies of the lives of other ancestors that Denisovans could have possibly crossed paths with.